was so mesmerized. I said, how is this possible? Wait a minute. How is this possible? Because with thermodynamic calculations, you know what the pH of water will be in any ambient conditions. He didn't add any chemicals. He didn't zap it with electricity. He didn't change the temperature of the room of the lab. What's going on? But he didn't stop with the water. He went on to increase the efficiency of the alkaline phosphatase, which are the body's machines. These are the engines of that, that set up the chemical reactions in the body the enzymes. And just by his thought, he increased the efficiency of the body's enzyme by a whopping 15%. This is not a random signal. This is huge. But Tiller is very, very unusual in that way. He's a meditator. And then, of course, the fruit fly. This was amazing. Fruit flies are the biological superstars. They mature from a larva to fruit fly in two weeks. You can really see intention effects in a very quick amount of time. You give them some sugar, you give them their little happy test tube house, they'll go on and make happy fruit flies. And that's what he did. Let me make an intention to help these fruit flies in a short uh, lifespan. And it was from 14 days to 11 this is 0 0.0001 peel value, highly statistically significant. So where does this energy come from that Tiller was showing? That's the magic. Where is this coming from? What is the ultimate inexhaustible source of energy? It's you. It's you. It's your consciousness. And he could quantify that and put an equation on it. We'll come back to that equation a little bit later on. This is revolutionary right here. So here's the other thing. Whenever your cells are exchanging packets of chemicals back and forth, that's information. They're exchanging information to make um, regeneration that cellular structure, the liver, the eyeball, whatever it is, that's it. Those signals back and forth is informational. But higher than that is your consciousness. If you can hold your consciousness steady without wavering and without doubt, you can make a change in your life. Absolutely, you can. And so in the course, I teach the participants seven steps to a powerful intention, okay? And one thing I want to say here is that I say consciousness, but the conscious awareness is really largely asleep. It's the subconscious that is really the powerhouse here. And for some people, they wanted to heal the inflammation. They even wrote, I want to heal my sed rate to normal. They would write that. Another one, what came up for her was not even her rheumatoid. She says, I don't care about my rheumatoid, but I do want to go to Africa. For her, that was meaningful. So you can have seven steps, but I'll give you one very fast food version of setting an intention. And I sometimes ask my patients at the bedside, what gives your life meaning? That's a writer downer. What gives your life meaning? It's not even your grandchild or your spouse or I want a million dollars in the bank. There's something deep in your heart and you have to explore that. It's heart over matter. It's your heart's wishes that will drive things. So, but in the course, they do get seven steps to a powerful intention. So how does all of this fit into that thermodynamics? Okay. So here is delta G, G equals PV plus internal energy minus temperature T. And this is it, S. This is the, in the brackets. I'm sorry, my, my, let me see if I can get my pointer again. Oh, I don't know how to do this. No, obviously I'm getting it all wrong, but I'll just move it down here. So what you want to focus on is S. And whenever you have an intention, 
Guess what happens? Disease is disorder, entropy, disorder. You're bringing order back into your life. You're bringing order back into your body. And if you do this consistently enough, it will happen. And I'm going to share with you some of my uh, participants' transformations because it was absolutely mind-blowing. I thought, this can't be. This is just a five-week course. How can this happen? But they were so ready. I think this is it. They were absolutely ready to take this on. So, oops, let me see if I can put this back. Next slide. Oops, yeah, here we are. So the new medical playbook, in my view, is doing all levels, doing what Dr. Hawkins said. Yes, if you need to use drugs, you can do that. And you should do that. I'm not going to tell my you know, patient, oh, you got a swollen knee, I'm not going to do anything for you. We do the necessary thing. But I bring in the subtle energies now. Absolutely. I teach them. And then I bring the intention piece. What gives you meaning? At first, they won't know. But now they're getting really, oh, this is how Dr. Manik speaks. And they're ready. Okay. And the camera. We are ready. We're doing all levels. And you know what's so cool? Their body posture changes. They have a new light in their eyes because we're not talking about pain all the time. What's your pain? I've had patients say, could you stop asking me about my pain or whether I can tie my shoelaces? I don't care about that. What are we going to do today? And I, you know, I've actually stopped some of these things consistently because when they get on this bandwagon, they're a different human being. So this is what we are saying. We're doing all 